Hello and welcome to Mosaic. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. And I hope that today you will experience the invitation to enter into the resurrection life alongside him. We are moving beyond death towards the resurrection life. And today we move beyond fear and experience what, what Christ gifts us in this life alongside him. I hope that it's a good experience for you joining us today. Death could not hold you The 
Jesus, you can have all this world. You can have all this world. Yes, you can have all this world. Just give me Jesus. What a hope I found. More faithful than a mother It would break my heart To ever lose each other oh, what a friend I found Closer than a brother I felt your touch More tender than journey to discover what is beyond Sunday, what is beyond our fears and our anxieties, our suffering, our doubts. And today our scripture comes from John 20. When it was evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked because they feared the Jews. Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, peace be with you. Having said this, he showed them his hands and his side. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. What are your greatest fears? As a young child, 
My fear was that I would fall on my head if I do a cartwheel. So I never learned how to do it, and I've been carrying the, that fear with me even into adulthood. My school friend had the fear that the earth would fall flat, flat on its face. And she would use the metaphor as flat as a pancake. During the pandemic of COVID-19, I think the entire world shares her fear that everything will fall flat, flat on its face. Everything has changed. Life as we know it has disappeared. And the stress and the anxiety, the realities, the effects, the fear of the world as we know it and entering, re-entering our world as, it, as we know it has all of us not only in a physical lockdown, but many of us also in a physical, emotional, spiritual, psychological lockdown. In this scripture, we see that the disciples understand something of this being locked down, being captive, held hostage by your fear. They are scared. They are anxious because they don't know life as they knew it before. The Messiah has died. Their life is in danger. They are being persecuted. The Jews are looking for them. They have no idea what the future is going to look like, where to go, what to do next. On this side of the door of the upper room, the atmosphere is filled with fear and anxiety. It's paralyzing them. But beyond this door, on the other side, is the risen Christ. On the other side, beyond the fear, is the one that meets them in their hopelessness, meets them where they are, and gives them evidence that he is alive and that he is risen. They, they can see, they can touch, they can feel. He gives them living proof that there's a resurrection life, that there's new life, that there's a life of hope, that it is real. And that is the good news for us today. That beyond our fears, beyond this space where I'm held hostage, there's a risen Christ. There is a resurrection life, a life of hope, of second chances, of restoration, of healing. God is not kept outside the door of fear. God moves through every wall and every door of fear that exists in this world. And no matter what fear or anxiety is busy keeping you hostage, keeping you in lockdown, Christ will move, is moving through that door and will appear in your midst in those moments with his friends, he enters that room, the room filled with anxiety and fear. And he invites them with two gifts to enter the resurrection life with, with, alongside him, to enter this life beyond what they know right now, to enter a life beyond their circumstances and their realities, beyond the fear. And the first gift that he offers them is the gift of four words. And it's four words that we repeatedly see in Scripture. It, you can read it again and again and again. And I think it's, it's there so many times because God knows how many times we need to hear these words. It's words that will create a shift in your soul. It's words that will free you from every fear and every anxiety. It's words that Christ himself, the risen Christ, gives his friends, his disciples, and gives each one of us today. Peace be with you. God knows that to move beyond, beyond fear, 
the tool, the key to go past this door, to go beyond this door. The key that ushers us into the resurrection life is his peace. And it's big, it's huge. It's so important to him that Jesus says it twice. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. What is peace? Peace is something that we all long for, that we all work for, that we're all looking and searching for. We have these ideas and ways and methods to try and work the peace of God between us and God into our lives. Some of us work hard at it outwardly. We try and put all these solutions in place. Political solutions, economic solutions, social solutions. But the thing is, it doesn't matter how philanthropic those solutions and ideas are, they will not work the peace of God into your life that Scripture talks about. For some of us, it's this this inner work that we're always constantly busy with. We think we find our equilibrium in therapy or in studying, finding more knowledge, gaining more knowledge. If I can just understand, then I'll have peace. For some of us, it's in our religion. The more I meditate, the more I pray, the more I worship, the more I'll experience peace. That's not how it works. Because the peace of God is a gift. The peace of God is grace. It's a gift from Christ. It is through faith that we can approach God and step into this peace. That's what scripture teaches us. That through our faith and through our experience of God, we will grow into peace. We will accept it. We will find it. We'll experience it and we'll grow into it. It's something that you learn through through experience. It's something that you get to know the more you, you, you find it, you look for it, you, you feel it. That's what Peter prays when he says, I hope that the peace will increase as you get to know Jesus Christ. The Amplified says that, that you may come to know practically through experience. It's more than just a head knowledge It's more than just my intellect. It's a knowing of my soul and my being. It's a knowing that comes through feeling it, experiencing, tasting it, seeing it. It's more than just knowledge of the mind, head knowledge. That's what Peter means when he says that your peace will increase as you get to know Jesus Christ. The Amplified Version says, may you come to know practically through experience. It's more than the mind. That's what Peter means when he says that your peace will increase as you get to know Jesus Christ. The Amplified Version says, may you come to know practically through experience. It's more than the mind. It's a knowing, it's a deep, deep experience. It's it's within me. I know that I know that I know. I feel it, I see it, I taste it. I experience this peace. I I grow in it. I grow in in the knowledge and experience that all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. I grow in the experience that the peace that surpasses all understanding, all emotions, all thoughts, all ideas and stories that I tell myself, peace be with you. Where do you need to hear those words in your life today? How are you being held captive or hostage by the fears and anxieties of your life? And you need to hear the words of the risen Christ. Peace be with you. Receive those words. Hear those words. Accept them. Experience them. They are true and they are words specifically for you. Peace be with you. 
the second gift that Christ brings, the risen Christ gives, is receive the Holy Spirit. He's, he's in their midst, and then he says to them, as the Father has sent me, I will now send you. And he breathes over them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. He says these words. And I think that this must be one of the most intimate moments in the New Testament. Can you imagine that space, that small upper room, these friends filled with fear, Christ appearing and giving them a sense of purpose, speaking life into that fear and saying, saying, I am sending you. As you have seen how I was sent by my Father, you have followed me. You have learned everything you need to know. Now I am telling you, there's something bigger for you. You are not made for this room. You are not made to be held captive by the fear. I'm sending you. I'm equipping you. And then he breathes on them. That breath the breath that he has lived with, the breath he used as he was speaking and preaching and praying. He gives them his breath. It breathes life into them. And then he gives them the special gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift that he has promised from the loving Father before as he breathes on them, receive the Holy Spirit. Breath is, is a symbol of that Holy Spirit and receiving that, but it's also so personal, so intimate. Raniero Castellamelo said that your breath is the most intimate, most private, most beautiful place of your being. It's from your breath that you can know what sprouts inside of you, in your inner world. That's why when we, we feel anxious or fearful or we feel panicky, we would say, I need some air or I can't breathe. When someone wants to faint, we would say, just breathe, breathe slowly. Just breathe deeply. Breathe. There where you are right now, receive. Receive the breath of Christ, the risen Christ, as he breathes on you. In the midst of your fear, accept the life that he's giving you and hear the words, receive the words, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, receiving the Spirit is not a one size fits all. The Holy Spirit isn't generic. It is so personal. It is so specific. Those disciples needed a specific spirit. They needed the Holy Spirit to give them the spirit to enter, re-enter into their lives and realities. I need a spirit that the Holy Spirit needs to gift me for this life as I return to what I know. To the life that has changed so much. You need a specific spirit as you re-enter into your life. The person going through a divorce, they didn't choose that reality. Their life has changed. Their marriage is dead. Their dreams are dead. Their future that they had in mind is dead. They need to receive the Spirit to enter this new life, to enter this new life as a divorced person. During the week, I read an article of a therapist that's also a preacher and he was sharing about this relationship he has with a man, um, a therapeutic relationship where he has been spending the last few years sharing the pain of this 40-year-old, 40 40 forty-something, who was traumatized through abuse as a child. And how this person experiences and feels that their childhood was stolen from them. And he writes how he had to invite this man to realize that the effect of holding on to this loss is, is unhealthy in his work life, in his marriage, in family life. 
and that he needs to let that go and receive the Spirit of God to enter into new, to the new life that he has been given. Receive the Holy Spirit. You who are waiting to hear whether you can return to a job or not, you who do not know how you're going to pay the bills at the end of the month, you need a spirit. We need the spirit to enter into this new life, the resurrection life. It's not a resuscitated life. It's not a life where the old, where the dead is brought back up. No, it's a new resurrected life waiting for us. Receive. Receive the Holy Spirit. To receive, you cannot clench fists. You cannot hold on tightly to what you knew. We can't. When we hold on to the fears, when we hold on to the dreams that are past, we cannot, we cannot receive the new. And those things start, start to hold on to us. The fear grips at us. The loss, loss grips at us. It, it, it holds us hostage. When we close our hands, we say, Lord, we do not need this gift. I have my own resources, I'm okay, I can cope. I've done that so many times. And then I get to the end of my resources and my limits. And I'm in lockdown with fear. The invitation is to open our hands with trust and faith and hope. With an openness and saying, God, you have the resources that I need. I can't do it on my own. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the gift. And Lord, that is the, that is the prayer of our hearts. That you will give us the Spirit. That you would give us your peace as we enter into a world that is broken and in chaos sometimes. And a world that has changed in how we knew it. Give us wisdom. Give us insight. Help us to see what we need to let go. What we need to take hold of and hold on to. Where do we need to open our hands, Lord? I pray for each person that is experiencing the the paralysis of and the power of fear and anxiety in their life. And along with them, Lord, I want to give that to you. I want to release that and I want to welcome you in my midst where you meet me where I'm at. You who, who walk and appear through every door of fear that exists in this world. And I receive the gifts, Lord. I receive your promise that peace will be with me. We receive the Spirit. We receive your presence. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you that you invite us into this resurrection life, that you send us as you were sent, that the plans you have for us are plans for good and to prosper. We receive that, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you need prayer, I want to invite you to reach out to us. You can send an email to gebedsversoeke at mosaic.com or you can phone our pastoral care line. We would love to minister to you, pray with you. Receive the blessing. May the love of God our Father, the grace of Jesus Christ and the presence, His presence of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. There will now be an opportunity to give and contribute financially, and you can give any way on the digital platforms that will um, be on your screen right now. Enjoy the week ahead.